Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Koftry, and it's my privilege to serve as Dean of the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at the University of British Columbia. Before we begin, uh, we'd like to acknowledge that the faculty is located on the traditional, ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. A very warm welcome to UBC's Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences 17th Annual White Coat Ceremony, which is co-presented with the BC Pharmacy Association. On behalf of our outstanding faculty, staff and students, thank you for joining our first year entry to practice Doctor of Pharmacy students the class of 2024, as we are reaffirm the ideals of professionalism today. I would like to thank everybody for participating and uh, extend a special thank you to our donors for providing so generously towards the white coats that our students receive during this uh, most important occasion. While obviously this year's event is not being held on campus due to the ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic, it is still a very significant milestone for you, our students, and for us as a faculty. In fact, the white coat ceremony is one of the most important events in the faculty's calendar. The white coat ceremony is common to many professional healthcare programs, and we are proud to continue that tradition in our faculty today. The purpose of the white coat ceremony is to acknowledge the transition of our 226 new entry to practice PharmD students further into the profession of pharmacy. We wish to instill in our newest students the knowledge that they are, there are certain core values and professional expectations that fundamentally underpin the privilege of being University of British Columbia pharmacy students, future UBC alumni, and future healthcare professionals. Knowledge, skills, commitment, service, pride in the profession, integrity, accountability, leadership, all of these are qualities that will make up an essential part of your everyday life as future pharmacists, healthcare professionals, and leaders of the profession. By affirming your commitment to professionalism today and accepting your white coat, you are joining a community of professionals who share the same commitment to improving the health and well being of others in British Columbia and beyond. You're agreeing to be excellent in the science and practice of pharmacy yet at the same time to be caring and compassionate. You commit to leading lives of honesty, uprightness and honor. You're assuming responsibility and accountability for the therapeutic outcomes and the safety of the drug therapy for your patients. And you're taking on the mantle of caring, not only for patients, but also about patients. All of this can be accomplished only if you're committed to developing professional and respectful relationships with patients, their families and carers and fellow healthcare professionals. There has never been a more critical time for the profession of pharmacy in BC, across Canada and around the world. And this is especially so given the challenges that everyone is facing with the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> the ongoing changes to the profession and the scope of practice across the healthcare system here in BC assures that each professional can utilize their knowledge and skills to the very best of their abilities to not only meet the needs of their patients, but to help make positive and substantive changes in the way in which healthcare is delivered, with the overall goal of improving health outcomes for everyone. An important element of this is the increasing availability of team based healthcare, where different healthcare providers are working more closely and synergistically to deliver better care and better access to care for patients. Pharmacists are playing a critical role in this right across the healthcare continuum. And in this faculty, we are particularly proud of the world leading work we do in this sphere and of the opportunities that our students have to learn about and experience team-based care. In survey after survey, pharmacists are listed as highly respected and deeply trusted healthcare professionals. They are the healthcare professionals that are closest to patients on the front line. Generally, patients see their pharmacists on average seven or eight times for every time they see a physician. In many rural and remote communities right across this province and the country as a whole, the pharmacist may be the only read, readily accessible healthcare provider. Pharmacists share a professional identity founded on integrity, ethical behavior, honor, and a true desire to improve the lives of their patients. Therefore, it is most fitting 
that we are joined today by many pharmacy and healthcare leaders and visionaries from British Columbia, whose collective impact is felt locally, nationally, and internationally. Pharmacy in British Columbia and the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences are blessed with many, many strong supporters and friends all over the country and beyond. Our more than 150 faculty and staff, 700 clinical faculty, more than six and a half thousand alumni, and many hundreds of friends and colleagues throughout the profession of pharmacy do so much for our students and support the faculty in so many different ways. And we are truly grateful for all that they do for us. The strength of any university, especially a great public institution like the University of British Columbia is its people. We are fortunate to have dedicated, committed and outstanding faculty, staff and students who work so hard to deliver and support our academic programs and who make this faculty what it is, one of the le world's leading pharmacy schools. And now we have a special message from Mr. Keith Shaw, the board president of the BC Pharmacy Association, who will say a few words on behalf of the association. 20 years ago, I was in exactly the same place you are now. I walked into pharmacy school excited, thrilled, and a little scared. Looking back, I am so grateful though that I've made that decision. I've had a wonderful career. And those same opportunities are open to you. Well, not exactly the same, because pharmacy has grown and expanded over the course of my career. So what does it mean to be a pharmacist in British Columbia? Well, you are now members of a health profession critical to patients' lives. Some of you may go on to work in hospital settings, in research, or in teaching. But I am looking forward to many of you joining us at the BC Pharmacy Association. As a community pharmacist, you will directly impact patients' lives every day. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in healthcare's rise to the forefront of conversations across the globe. As healthcare providers, your skills, your knowledge, and your experience is vital to the communities you work and live in. Throughout your journey, you will meet many of the thousands of pharmacists currently serving in communities across BC. You will make lasting connections and friendships that will carry you throughout your career. In addition to the academic and practical knowledge that you will obtain at UBC, new connections and friendships are valuable and they will help you expand your network and opportunities. Moving forward, I encourage you, no, I urge you to join the Pharmacy Association where each day we're working hard to advance the practice and economic sustainability of pharmacy in BC. Community pharmacy is a profession that I love and it's a profession that continues to grow. Pharmacy is a collaborative practice, so let's work together now and in the years to come. I look forward to meeting many of you and good luck in your studies this year. Congratulations again and welcome to the profession of pharmacy. Thank you very much to uh, Keith Shaw for uh, that message from the uh, BC Pharmacy Association. <clears throat> and now, Dr. Kerry Wilbur, who is Executive Director of Entry to Practice Education in the faculty, will be leading you through the recital of the Pledge of Professionalism. To facilitate that, I kindly ask that you have your pledges ready to read in front of you. Thank you, and uh, let's begin, and I'll hand over to Kerry. Thank you very much, Dean Coftry. I wish to extend a very warm welcome to our students uh, uh, online today, uh, as well as um, the family members who have perhaps joined online and friends and loved ones, uh, as well as uh, any faculty and staff who have joined uh, our white coat ceremony virtually online today. Uh, this is uh, typically such a special event as our Dean highlighted, um, uh, a, a gem in our calendar of events each year. Uh, and we look forward to continuing to forge our connections with you as an incoming class in person when we're able to gather in the same physical space in our beautiful building at the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences on campus at UBC. For students in the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at UBC, there is a need to build and reinforce a professional identity founded on integrity, ethical behavior, and honor. And I will echo the Dean's sentiments that it is indeed a privilege to be able to serve as a pharmacist. 
your development of professionalism is a vital process in your pharmacy education that will help ensure that you are true to the professional relationship you establish with yourself and society as you become a member of the pharmacy community. Integrity will be an essential part of your everyday life and it is incumbent upon you to pursue all academic and professional endeavors with honesty and commitment to service. I understand you may have a copy of the pledge before you. Uh, I have it displayed across uh, two slides. Uh, and even though you're asked to remain mute um, uh, with your um, Zoom connection today, I do encourage you in your own physical space uh, to recite this pledge out loud with me as we would have done together uh, on campus during a live white coat ceremony. Uh, so to accomplish your goal of professional development, uh, I'll speak as you in first person. I, as a student in the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at the University of British Columbia, will accept the responsibility for my actions as a student and as a healthcare professional that will reflect on both myself and my school. I will consider the needs of others before myself. I will develop a sense of loyalty and duty to the profession of pharmacy by contributing to the well-being of others and by accepting accountability for membership in the profession. I will foster professional competency through lifelong learning and striving for high ideals, teamwork, and unity within the profession. I will commit to the oath of a pharmacist and the code of ethics for pharmacists as set forth by the profession. I will dedicate my life and practice to excellence by an ongoing reassessment of personal and professional values. I will maintain the highest ideals and professional attributes to ensure optimal patient care. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you in person again in our beautiful space at the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences. And I hope to meet you wearing your beautiful white coats and labels sometime soon in the very future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kerry, um, and uh, thank you everybody for uh, participating in the uh, recital of the uh, Pledge of Professionalism, wherever you are. <clears throat> now, uh, I'm very pleased to introduce uh, a message from uh, one of your uh, colleagues, Jamie Park, who is a fourth year student uh, in the PharmD program. So over to Jamie. Good morning, class of 2024. My name is Jamie Park, and I'm a fourth year student in the UBC Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences. It's a pleasure to welcome you to our professional community of pharmacy. Congratulations, you made it. Today marks a very important day in your pharmacy career. You can say that's one of the highlights of your journey that you'll never forget. It's such a great honor for me to be part of the White Coat Ceremony and share some of the insights that I've learned as I now enter my last year in pharmacy school. Although these unprecedented times have transformed and redefined our new normal, there's one thing that hasn't changed in pharmacy. It is our devoted care for our patients. Pharmacists have been in the forefront since the beginning of the pandemic to ensure a continuity of care for our patients as a key member of the healthcare team. Today onwards, you have the responsibility of taking care of the health of the public as a future pharmacist. It is quite a significant responsibility and I understand that at times it can be overwhelming. However, throughout the next four years, you will learn the necessary skills, knowledge, and abilities to prepare you to be a competent, professional, and caring pharmacist. As you now embark on your professional journey, I would like to share three key messages with you. First, take care of yourself. There will be times where you face failures and setbacks. So don't let these discourage and pull you back. Think of these as opportunities for you to reflect on your strengths and skills and grow as a better, stronger, and resilient future pharmacist. As well, remember that you're not alone. Reach out to your friends, family, 
faculty and staff members and others will always be there for you to support you on your journey. Second, take care of others. Always put your patients first and offer the best possible care. As a pharmacist in training, you're in a unique position to be a trusted link between patients and their healthcare team. You have the ability to make a significant impact in patients' lives and empower patients to improve their health. Third, take care of our future. You are our agents of change. You will redefine our profession and lead the way to the future of healthcare. Utilize your time during the pharmacy program to meet like-minded peers, start new initiatives, and be involved in extracurricular activities. These experiences will act as a strong foundation for your future as you contribute to healthcare in diverse areas of practice. So remember, during this difficult time, and for brighter times ahead, it is important to, do care, to take care of yourself, take care of others, and inspire others to shape the future. I would like to end with a favorite quote of mine by Mary Dunbar. Quote, we are each gifted in a unique and important way. It is our privilege and our adventure to discover our own special light, end quote. As you gain more exposure and experience throughout the pharmacy program, practicums, and activities, you will shape your unique professional identity. It is not something that is made in one night. Be patient, be humble, be true to your values, and strive for professional and personal growth. And remember to shine your brightest light. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much indeed, uh, Jamie, for, uh, for those uh, excellent remarks. Um, great for you to participate in the uh, event today. Um, now it is a, a great pleasure for me uh, to introduce uh, our uh, keynote speaker this afternoon, um, Mona Kwong. Dr. Mona Kwong is a community-based uh, primary care pharmacist. She received her Bachelor of Pharmacy and Master of Science in Pharmacy degrees from UBC and her Doctor of Pharmacy degree from the University of Florida. She's interested in enhancing equality of patient care, promoting collaborative interprofessional teams, education, patients and peers, and mentorship of junior healthcare professional. She is a pharmacy advisor and director, Addiction Pharmacy Fellowship Program at the BC Center for Substance Use, a clinical pharmacist consultant at the Infinity Medical Specialist Clinic, and is a managing partner with RxDM of an independent pharmacy, Pharmasafe How in downtown Vancouver. <clears throat> Mona is actively involved in uh, various regulatory bod bodies, uh, and uh, has been uh, previously vice chair, chair, a member of the board of the College of Pharmacists of British Columbia, um, and is one of the faculty's uh, 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 most uh, accomplished uh, alumni. So it's a great pleasure to uh, invite Mona uh, to uh, share some of her experience uh, with you today. So I'll hand over to Mona now. Thanks, everybody. I'm just going to share my slide deck and then. We'll walk through a few things. Okay. All right. So I've been asked to give you guys a pep talk. And um, just to go over, I, I do love everywhere I work in. And, I, and again, there's opportunities for us to chat a little bit more later in a more informal session. And hopefully I can see you guys. I'm, I won't know who you guys are because I can't see you uh, in, in reality right now. Um, so love working at the Infinity Medical Specialist Clinic, love working at my own store. Uh, we have new partners, which I'll go through a little bit because um, things just change over time. And our team uh, at the BC Center for Substance Use is just so amazing. So I am actually on the Coast Salish land, uh, Squamish, Squamish, uh, Muskim and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Wherever you guys are, um, just have a little acknowledgement in your heart for your land. So my pep talk today, I'm just going to go through. Um, I wrote this out. Our delivery drivers actually call all our students Stu. Dent. So welcome. Um, this is my pep talk to you on today, uh, on the 24th of November 2020. 
We're here because of the white coat ceremony. Um, I'm going to tell you everything that my preceptors always told me is wear good socks, comfortable socks, wear really comfortable shoes the next little while because you really don't want to wreck any of your back a little bit later on. And why we're here virtually is essentially um, because of COVID. I'm sorry I can't meet with you uh, personally. I have met a couple of you uh, in first year already, which is great. Um, on the lower end of uh, this uh, slide deck, these are two of our students, also a fourth year student and actually a first year student. So I encourage you to find a job somewhere or even volunteer somewhere uh, in order to um, look over your studies a little bit more in a real environment. And of course, we're here virtually. What I can tell you today is you guys can do it. Um, I'll furthermore give you a few other tips uh, what I've learned over the years of being a pharmacist. I've been a pharmacist for over 25 years now. So pharmacy is what you make it to be. This is our team, uh, black male pictures that you can anticipate if you do rotations uh, with us person on the left is a fourth year student. So he just finished his rotation. He literally just passed. So I'll tell you my cephalexin story uh, way back um, when I first started at a pharmacy in downtown Vancouver and I was placed in that pharmacy. And I remember the, the uh, preceptor asking me or telling me, how come you don't know how to counsel cephalexin? I think you guys would have memorized this one. This is an antibiotic um, that you usually give out for skin infections. So he basically picked up the phone and he wanted to return me. So that was the start of my rotations. It wasn't too good. I wasn't a fourth year student. I didn't know a thing and he wanted to return me, but essentially I was a second year student. He eventually ended up keeping me. And from there, I've actually been with them for over 20, 20 years or so, because eventually I ended up buying one of, part of one of the stores. So that tells you that it is what you make it to be. You never know what can happen in terms of your rotations. You'll meet many wonderful people um, and you'll meet very much uh, a lot of wonderful uh, staff members too. Um, the person in the lion outfit, for example, um, she finished her degree at UBC, traveled a little bit uh, to Montreal, to New York, did many different things and eventually came back here and, and learned a little more about pharmacy. By the time she came here, she actually didn't know uh, pennies didn't exist in Canada anymore. And then the two on the right hand side, uh, Earl and Jalcita, they're amazing. They're part of my team. We don't have a large turnover and uh, they've been my team mates for at least 10 years or so. Training pathways. I'm just going to give you a gist of everything available and you probably have gone over everything, but I wanted to make sure that you knew about uh, certain uh, pathways. You have your current degree, you have residency opportunities, hospital residencies. Um, some of my students actually wanted me to share with you that they encourage you to apply for residencies outside of BC as well, just to learn a little bit more. They also wanted me to tell you industrial residency is a really great place to, to get connected to learn a lot about business skills. That's one of the places where I did um, some training too. And it's not readily available or, or people don't know uh, in British Columbia. So a couple of, of our uh, students that I have mentored over the years, they're actually completed industrial residency programs and they're working in many different areas, which is amazing. Community residency is not as common right now because you have the entry to practice degree and there's so much more opportunities that you all can actually go around the different provinces, uh, the different communities, urban, uh, rural practices that uh, you have compared to when I went to school. You have fellowship programs that's in um, USA and then you also have fellowship programs within, you know, here um, that we're building upon master's program, PhD, lots of different things that you guys can all go into. So lots of training pathways. And so that's why I'm really excited for all of you, especially with your entry to practice degree, because there will be so much more opportunities for all of you. So I wanted to say a few lessons is never say never. I actually said I would never manage a pharmacy. I would never own a pharmacy. I would never teach. I would never go to grad school. I would never go to the States to do more schooling. So I did all that. And I want to tell you at the very beginning, never say never. Look at those opportunities as they come. And it's just been so amazing, the breadth of um, friends that we've met over, over our time in the last 20 plus years. 
two things I wanted to say. Um, my own mentor, Ron Ingram, he passed away recently and he always said to me, it's never a good time. It's never a good time to do stuff. It's never a good time to buy a part of a store. He actually called me in the middle of my PharmD school and said, it's not a good time now, but guess what? I need to sell. Uh, so these are opportunities that might come your way and evaluate it. Um, my dad always said to me, he's 80 something, nothing's 100%, make your decision. That's from my house of dad. Just make a decision and go for it. And I've actually um, reflected on this and it's been great. And a lot of my mentees have also uh, used the same advice and, and they, they're, they're going to different places in their own lives, uh, whether in pharmacy or within their own personal lives as well. So make it a journey and not a race. Uh, this is an example of a journey. This is actually in Karameas. Uh, one of our international students actually um, was brave enough to go there, work for a year. Uh, and I'm saying it's a journey and not a race. Uh, so you see, we were sitting in the middle of this bridge. Uh, it's a red bridge in Karameas. And she took a chance. She went to Karameas. Uh, she learned so much. Um, this was about four years ago. Right now, she, en she ended up in Edmonton, actually, and opened up uh, a store there, a pharmacy there, and she's loving it. And these are the experiences that she's brought into more of a real practice that uh, she just really loved um, and loved everything she, that she did in Karameas. So make it a journey and not a race. It's never a race. Everybody has their own time, their own place to find their place in pharmacy. Give and share opportunities. Um, and I said, everything happens for a reason. Be open to opportunities. So the four individuals walking down uh, this pathway, uh, they are actually setting up a flu clinic. Um, two of them were my students. Uh, and one of them is a first year student. The person on the left the, that's lagging behind a little bit, he's a technician student. So we are sharing opportunities to enable the, the two fourth year students at the beginning of this lineup. They're actually setting up a flu shot. So I just let them be in and see what, what they did. The person on the right here, uh, Sue, uh, Sue's currently working at um, BCCDC at the DPIC uh, office, which is um, Drug and Poison Information Center. I actually met her about 15 years ago when she was an undergrad uh, during uh, teaching, uh, teaching classes at that time. And right now she finished up her PharmD and uh, this is us coaching her to give presentations. So it was quite fun doing that uh, this summer. She was one of our students that we took in at, at our store. The person on the right, uh, at the lower right, that's Angela. Uh, Angela has been with us for a long time as well. Started with us, I think, as a second year student, um, finishing up her PharmD over in Alberta as well and doing many different things um, within a business setting too, and as well uh, working in more of a clinical setting in some projects that she's interested in. So she's interested in research, tons of opportunities. None of these students, when I spoke to them at the very beginning, knew what they were doing. The same as me, I didn't know at all. And so that's why I'm saying to you, everything happens for a reason and be totally open to opportunities. So networking is important. Um, community of practice, meet all your classmates, learn about your profession. Keith spoke uh, a bit earlier on from the BC PHA. Within your school, other schools in pharmacy, in our uh, location, we actually host students from other schools of pharmacy from Australia as well as across Canada. And we often give chances for the other students to meet the UBC students as well so that they can form their own teams and progress along with your ideas because you guys are our future. Uh, you guys have amazing opportunities ahead of you. There's community practice, hospital, there's industry uh, that I spoke about, academia, some of my colleagues are online right now. Research opportunities. If you don't like bench research, there's community-based research, there's education research. Talk to your um, professors and instructors about it because there's tons of opportunities out there to find something that you might like. Community clinics or specialty clinics. Um, insurance, uh, we haven't even touched upon that. A lot of my colleagues work in insurance firms and that is also a clinical setting in a way uh, with collaborative work. WorkSafe, uh, government public servants that I liaise with a lot in some of my other work. Regulatory boards, the College of uh, Physicians 
physicians and surgeons, the College of Nursing Practitioners. There's tons of regulatory boards that we work with and we talk with in order to, um, to help the patients in terms of a collaborative practice and other public health places that I mentioned as well. The other thing I want to bring attention to is always look at your patients. Be humble, learn about cultural humility. This is also a journey, it's going to take time. And by looking at the patient and be looking at your own um, understanding of cultural humility, you will actually go along and help your patients more in the future. And make it a mission to talk to patients a bit more, understand where they came from. It's so important. And that's what we focus on in some of our students when they come to us for rotations. Remember to laugh. I have no idea what these two are doing. Uh, one's a technician student. The other one, I think she was a second year. I believe she's a graduated pharmacist by now. I don't know what they're doing. They're playing with boxes in the store, but uh, they're having fun. It's important to laugh. It's important to have fun while you're learning um, because you need that social aspect. You need to relax. You need to perform self-care. So finishing off the pep talk, it's really about the journey. It is, you can do it. It's about the journey. And also the most important thing for us um, in terms of what I like doing uh, if everything fails, and sometimes you have bad days, it's okay. Eat ice cream, no matter what. Um, and if you can't eat ice cream, or this is actually gelato, you can eat sorbets or, or even uh, take a lactate beforehand. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mona, for uh, for sharing your uh, journey and, and for sharing those uh, really uh, uh, insightful uh, thoughts of, about the profession and, and the opportunities that exist for for students as they go through the program and, and as they enter the profession. And, and thank you so much for, for being such a great mentor and role model for our students and, and such, a, such a great supporter of, of the faculty. <clears throat> so on behalf of uh, UBC's Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, we are, we are honored that you uh, all have chosen the faculty to begin your professional journey. Your success in this endeavor depends as much on what you as students bring to us as, as on what you take away from your time here. I can think of no greater privilege than to share in this reaffirmation of professionalism with you, a class that will take personal responsibility for helping to lead the practice of pharmacy to new levels as our healthcare system and society evolve. An expanded sense of professionalism and a commitment to lifelong learning is critical if you are to succeed in this dynamic and complex healthcare environment. Prior to today, you were all asked to submit photos and clips of yourselves wearing your white coats. If you've not already done so, you can still send them to us and be sure to visit the Instagram feed on our faculty channel to view all of the submissions. That brings uh, us to the end of uh, the, uh, the white coat ceremony today. Um, I want to thank you all for, uh, for being here um, and thank all the uh, faculty and staff and, and other students who have uh, joined uh, the uh, event today. And, and thanks to everybody uh, in the faculty um, uh, for who, who's been responsible for putting this together um, including Jimmy Galvao and his team and, and Carolyn Rogers um, and, and also to uh, Raymond from uh, UBCAVIT for uh, making sure that the technology all worked. So um, thank you again uh, for uh, joining us. Please be careful and, and stay safe. Um, and um, just to, to end out the, uh, uh, the white coat ceremony, we will uh, leave the uh, names of all of the students who have uh, reaffirmed their uh, commitment to professionalism uh, today. And uh, th th those will be uh, shared on the screen as we uh, 
end the uh, ceremony. So uh, thank you all again, and uh, uh, please uh, do take care.